Hello, everyone. Uh, we apologize for the short delay. Welcome back from the lunch. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Um, so the next session today is increasing language diversity on media projects, and I will be the presenter. It was supposed to be like a panel session together with uh, Mali and Sadi and John from Wikimedia Norway, but uh, for some reason they are unable to attend in person. So I'll take you through a research publication that we published last year and also introduce you to the Language Diversity Hub uh, projects and uh, how you can be involved. Next slide. Okay, so as I said, we'll be talking more about the research reports and the findings and the next steps. Next. Thank you. Okay. The other way. I think you're holding it backwards. Right. Okay. So today's agenda is about the language diversity hub, the background, and also we'll talk briefly about the research, the methods that we used, the findings, and then the next steps. So Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub, uh, I, I was here um, in the early session about hubs, what hubs are, and uh, how the communities uh, within the Wikimedia movements are forming different uh, hubs to tackle different challenges within the Wikimedia movement. Uh, so I will not bore you much with the meaning of hub, but if you if you ask me, hubs are just like uh, communities where people come together to like build on initiatives, identify challenges within the movement, and also collaborate to tackle some of these challenges. Um, for the Language Diversity Hub, there was a Language Diversity Network in 2012. It was founded in 2012. And after many years, we decided to initiate uh, the Language Diversity Hub, which would basically build upon what the network was already doing. And the purpose of this was to support and connect affiliates and volunteers to new and smaller language communities and how we can collect, collaboratively address some of the pertinent challenges that smaller language versions of Wikipedia committees face. Um, this is the steering committee. Most of my colleagues will be joining online, I hope so. Amir, we have Amir from the Wikimedia Foundation. He's also a member of the language uh, committee, and they are responsible for approving new versions of Wikipedia and other wikis. And we have Amri from Taiwan, Ayumi and then John from Wikimedia Norway, Mali, uh, for Mali of Wikimedia Norway, Oscar, who is currently co-leading the hubs initiatives with me, and then Sadiq from uh, also works with Wikimedia Foundation and also a member of the committee. He's from India, and yes, so these are members of the steering committee for the Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub. The purpose of the research, as I mentioned, was to identify some of the barriers that smaller languages faced or new versions of Wikipedia contributors faced as far as um, creating content is concerned. And we wanted to know some of the limiting factors and how collectively we can help address that together with the communities. And the method of the interview was semi-structured interview with contributors in different regions. We engaged several contributors from uh, West Africa, Asia, so Africa, Asia, and then North America. And we're looking at identifying um, four types of barriers that all of us are already aware of, which is technical, economic, education, and knowledge, and also the social challenges. And aside from organizing the interviews, we're also looking at having like a very in-depth conversation with participants, uh, the research participants, learning from them, and allowing them to share with us all the information that they know about contributing to their language Wikipedia and the challenges. And many people ask me um, about how we came up with the languages that we worked with. So we're basically looking at these um, three key areas. So the criteria was that we want to see that uh, there's an activity happening within the incubator or the project language. And then we also wanted to make sure as it has always been to have like a global representation. And we were also looking at the likelihood to be able to find someone to interview. So uh, 
so many people are scared to like participate in mm -hmm. research projects, especially with interviews. Some of the interviews were in person, others were uh, online. I did a couple of interviews in Rwanda at Wiki in Daba. And we came out with these languages. Uh, this six, some of them, I cannot mention them, but you can see their names and then uh, uh, the language codes and the regions that they represent. And as at that time, whether they were incubator or like already published language wiki. So these were the participants of the research. And the interview, as I mentioned, some of them, you can find them on our YouTube channel, uh, Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub. Uh, some of them were in person and most of the, active, the, the interviews were online. And the goal was also to make someone who is very closer to the public. Very excited about that. And Amir is one of the resource person that everybody know when you need like help with uh, incubator or anything around incubator. Um, so let's move forward. And then when we want, we ask them about how they contribute to Wikipedia, most of them, about 54.5% of them said they contribute to Wikipedia and uh, using mobile phones. This, is, this was very different from the participants from, um, I think, North America. Most of them said they contribute using their laptops, but it's quite different when it comes to contributors from Africa. And then um, even with uh, other gadgets, desktops, other people, we have very little people contributing with um, uh, like tablets and stuff like that. And then the general understanding of basic computer knowledge, like how to navigate using a computer to edit Wikipedia, like opening new tabs to get your references and stuff like that. But it was interesting to know that more people contribute to Wikipedia in Africa on their mobile phone than on computer. And language technology, we asked them how uh, people think about uh, how they can get keyboards for their language. For example, in the Ghanaian community, oh, in the Ghanaian community, um, uh, majority of the participants contribute using mobile phones, right? But they also don't know how to use laptops. So because they are very much used to editing on their computers and laptops, it's very difficult for them, even if they get laptops. And then um, like having uh, keyboard support on iOS and Android was also a big challenge. But thankfully, we've been able to devise other means of helping people to contribute using uh, with media wiki by combining few characters to be able to get some special characters for Latin um, language contributors, uh, those languages that are supported by the Latin characters. And then uh, spell checks were also a big challenge. People want to see uh, spell checks in their language uh, projects. And then, as I said, some of the uh, keyboards were only available on Wiki platforms like MediaWiki, where you have to combine like two, three characters to be able to get like one special character. And in terms of economy, um, people have definitely have a um, challenge with the cost of internet data in Africa and also uh, generally in the global south and then uh, low tradition for volunteering in communities, which is very much, uh, you know, connected to miss, uh, most of the African communities. So about 70% have limitations in depth in terms of economy and those who said they do not have um, limitations with regards to economy are those in the north america and europe because they say they have like internet connectivity and they don't need internet uh, like cost of they don't have to pay much to get access to internet to be able to contribute to wikipedia and then in terms of social challenges we're looking at the communities how small they are uh, and the language groups what are the variations in terms of dialects? How many dialects do they have in the language and how they can change, like, you know, understand the difference in terms of terminology and stuff like that. And some of the communities have very, the topmost one were, were that uh, a lot of them have very few contributors in their community and most of them don't have time. We also engage a lot of students uh, in some communities and they said they don't have time because they go to school and then they only contribute to Wikipedia when they are on vacations and low tech skills in general also reflected in the social challenge. And then education, 
uh, some of the languages are not uh, taught in schools. They are very uh, much restricted to their community and they basically cannot find resources to be able to contribute to their language uh, Wikipedia because of the fact that there are no... And if your language is not taught in schools, it's very difficult to recruit new contributors. It's a big challenge. For, for some uh, communities, they are able to get most of their community volunteers from institutions like uh, the teacher training colleges and the likes. So the motivation, bringing knowledge about the language and culture to the next generation, this were some of the things that most of the 